Hey guys, got another plan grid training for the punch list. Uh, just a little video that I'm gonna put together for you real quick. I'm gonna open up my plan grid and just get to my project list. This is gonna be for starting a punch list at whatever job you do have. I have some active punch lists on here and I'll show you what I've got going and how to get there. So uh, one I'm doing right now is First United Bank. So what I like to do to start my punch list, um, it's good to have two people going, um, one person writing and one person getting the punch list on plan grid. Sometimes if it's gonna be a long one or you're gonna be by yourself, I actually think it's easier to go through and write it and come back the following afternoon or next morning and take pictures and place everything on plan grid. That might save you some time during the punch list. So what I'm gonna do, I always go to like my construction plan or um, if you make a lot of notes on plan grid, just go to any, any sheet is gonna work. I'm gonna show you what mine looks like on my construction plan. I have items everywhere. So what I'm gonna do to, <clears throat> to get everything nice and clean and easy is look at the filter here. I'm gonna hide everything. So if I have any marks that are on here, that's gonna get rid of everything. So now I'm gonna come through, say we're starting in the lobby area of the bank here. I'm gonna create my list. Um, my slate is empty, create my task list. Now I've gone through here already and I've put all of my sub names in on all of these different um, task items. Wherever it says, you know, drywall, paint, caulking, that kind of stuff, we don't want to use those because it's really hard to cipher at the end whenever you make the list. So we're going to make it to where it is the subcontractor's name. It should say new right there at the top. If it doesn't say new, you need to call your project manager and tell them to give you different access to plan grid. You'll have to be, I believe, a collaborator in order to be able to add new icons for subcontractors. As we get better at this, it may be already in there for you. Once plan grid plans are being entered by Lisa or whoever might be doing it for you. So I've gone through before I start, I take my sub list, I click new. And when you do that, the first thing it's going to ask you is, it's gonna show you the stamp. Who do you want to do it? I've got, you know, gauges granite. I'm gonna put uh, GG, right? And then I'm gonna label this gauges. So we'll say gauges granite, right? Gauges granite. And I'm gonna hit that. I already have them in here, so I'm not gonna do that. But you would just hit done. And then they're gonna pop up in here. Do that with all of your subcontractors before you get started. It'll make your life a little easier. Now we've done it, right? Uh-oh, had a fail. So we're gonna go back, if something like that happens, I'm back on my construction plan. It's gonna show me everything again, right? So I come back through here and I hit hide everything. All right, now I'm on my page. I'm gonna make my first item, task list, the little check with the lines. Uh, I'm just clicking somebody, this one says Dallas Metal Fabricators. Let's say on the corner of this, they had something, right? I'm just gonna to touch right there exactly where I want it to be placed. And this is the important part, when you come through here, there's a few things you wanna do. The first thing you wanna do is publish this. You're gonna click publish. That's gonna make it to where your project manager can see every item that you put on here. If you don't publish it, what'll happen is you are the only one that can see the list. 
Um, and you're gonna have to go back later after you do all of them and publish each and every one. And it can get confusing and you can miss them easily. So make sure to hit publish. Um, we'll leave this stuff alone. Location's already there. You can put a start date and finish date if it's something maybe that you've got a lead time on. And you can put that information there. This list, you're gonna click and click punch list. Make sure that it's on the punch list. This will be easy to filter later. If you're making task items along the job, these things will also be on your other task items that you put on. So you don't wanna put tasks from weeks ago on your new punch list. Hit punch list, go back. You're gonna come in and you're gonna put description. We're just gonna say metal, blah, 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 right? You've got your description. You can add photos and videos. You're gonna click take new photo. So in this case, I'm just gonna shoot a photo from right here from my iPad, right? Done. Now, if I needed to show them something specific within this picture, maybe it's a ceiling tile and you can't really make out in the picture what's wrong or which one it is. There's a little squiggly line right here. Touch that and you can literally draw on the picture. Okay, you can change the color. If you wanna save it, just hit save. Otherwise you can just cancel it, maybe redo it. Tags, that's allowing you to tag some of your other uh, coworkers that are on your plan grid. Um, we don't use it much, but maybe in the future. Upload failed, I'm not sure what happened there. If it does that, sometimes I'll go back through and add it from my phone which is another important reason to publish everything. So we've opened it up, we've hit publish, we've hit punch list, we've put in our description, we've added a photo of the issue. Now something else that I do is I click on this at the very bottom that says layers. You can hit add new layer. This is how you have to get to it. Um, I've already done it. I put a punch list layer. So I had multiple things on the same sheet of paper. What would happen here is if I had punch list as a layer, I could have, you know, some of the other tasks that I had on here, electrical problems, I could have that on a layer. So when I touch that, it's only going to show me the things that are that I have on that layer. This is this is totally optional. If you start your punch list on a true blank sheet and you do not have to hit hide everything, it's already a blank sheet, there's no reason to do this. So that is how you get the item there. Once you're done, you just touch and it is there. Very simple. That's how you get one item. I say very simple, there's a couple of steps. You just, once you get it going, you'll, you'll, you'll get a little bit quicker at it. So now um, I'm gonna delete this one here because it's not a real thing and I have an active punch list on this job so I don't need to do that. We're gonna delete that forever. Yes. Okay. Now see, you can't see anything on mine here but I can filter this where I created my layer before and go down and hit custom layers. Now I can see my punch list. Let me see that. Let's see, let's, hit, let's clear all I've got. I have everything hidden, so I need to take that away. And if I go down here to custom layers and hit punch list, it'll only show me my punch list items. So that's that. Now I have all of my items. I've done them. Now there's two ways we can do this. We want to go back and go down to tasks. I'm ready to send out my list to everybody, right? So there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can hit select tasks if you want, and you can just send it to the sub, or you can create a task report with everything included in here, or if you want, you can organize this to where it's only showing under status right here, I have many closed items. I'm going through and I open my task and I change the status 
to open if it's you know not complete and closed once it has been complete and then I follow up with a picture showing the before and after of the issue so right now I want only open items status open right now all of my closed items are gone I can go back to create task report I went from 64 down to 25. I have 25 items that are still remaining on my punch list that I need to get done. So now I need to re uh, remind my, my subs about it. I'm gonna send the list out again and say, hey guys, these are the remaining items that you still have on the punch list. Please help me to get these done in the next week's time. So we'll hit create task report and it's gonna be under PDF automatically. You're just gonna hit email report um, and this is going to be the link. Now you can change the subject and all that. This is the way that you're going to do it from the iPad. If you want to have it organized better, um, then you can do it from a computer. And I've got another video posted uh, on this same YouTube page that shows you how to do it from the computer. So check that video out on how to send a punch list from a laptop not an iPad or an iPhone. What's gonna be the difference here is whenever I send this link, it is going to show all of these items in numerical order on how I put them on the plans. So it'll show the subs out of order. So when the subs are looking for their items, they're gonna go through and they're gonna have to go, okay, I got one on page one, one on page seven, one on page 13. So they gotta go through there and individually find all of their stuff. If you send it from the computer, you are able to organize it differently. Whenever you hit export, it doesn't just throw it in an email. It lets you organize it before doing that. And you can organize it per stamp, which automatically groups it per subcontractor. And it makes it very clean. So if you'd like to send out a clean punch list on the first go, get with your PM, have them watch the video if they have any questions or call me and send out from the laptop so that they can organize it per subcontractor and it's very clean. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks.